Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast. It's the Pewter Post Game Show, a Thursday night edition or Friday morning edition since it is now 1230 a.m. where uh, we are recapping another loss for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you can't tell by the somberness in my voice, the Bucs lost 27-22 to uh, the Baltimore Ravens. This is a game where the Bucs came out swinging, looking solid in the first quarter, and then things fell apart once again in the second half, and we'll recap everything from the game. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Joined with me is my co-host from PeterReport.com, Scott Reynolds. And Scott, this is another really frustrating loss, I think, for more reasons than anything, that the Bucs continue to have the same problems that they've struggled with in their last two losses to the Steelers and the Panthers and not much really changed uh, on offense, defense, and special teams. Blunders again all over the place with brief glimpses of, hey, looks like they turned a corner and then they just didn't. Yeah, it, it's it's disappointing to, to say the least. Um, I, I predicted a Bucks loss. I, I'm not surprised that, that they did lose. Um, I, I think statistically you look at the score at the end and you can't look at this game as 27, 22 because that last touchdown, I mean, it, it counted for the, for the odds makers and for, for Vegas, but uh, the Buccaneers just completely lost this game because they could not score points on offense, nor they, nor could they sustain drives. And, you know, you, you have to understand, and, and I'm, I'm going to be a little bit of a defensive apologist here. And come at me if you want to. I, I, I'm happy to take it. But when when you look at that at the final total plays, the Ravens had 74 plays. The Buccaneers had 62. But before that final drive, which was an 11-play scoring drive by Tampa Bay, before they took the field, the Ravens already had 27 points on the board. The damage had been done. And the Ravens had 74 plays to Tampa Bay's 51. And, and even including that 11-play drive at the end, the Ravens still had a time of possession advantage, 38 minutes and 23 seconds to 21 minutes and 37 seconds. That's a 17-minute differential in favor of the Ravens. And there are some things that still hold true, even in the modern-day NFL. Time of possession doesn't always matter, but it mattered tonight. Because the Buccaneer defense got worn out, it got gassed, and you got to remember, it's missing a lot of players. Raheem Nunez Rochez is starting now, but he's a backup player. Akeem Hicks is is not there, right? Yeah, they missed a lot of players in in the secondary. Uh, probably the best player on defense, Antoine Winfield Jr., was not there tonight, right? And, and again, we saw a decent performance by the defense in the first half, and then just no help at all from the offense again in the third quarter and really even in the second quarter too. And it just snowballs on the defense. They just get worn down and worn out. Yeah. I mean, the, the defense isn't a hundred percent innocent in, in this whole Correct. thing, but yes. I, to I no totally, I totally hear you. I mean, the bucks jumped out to a 10, three lead. They scored a touchdown in the first quarter for the first time all season. Uh, thank you to Leo for the $5 super chat. We got yes. a couple other super chats in there as well. So, and we will get to it. We see that. He says, uh, this is the end of Leftwich. Brady played awful in the second half. He looks mentally checked out of the game at this point. Goes for marriage. And there was so many either three and outs. There was two straight three and outs. And then they had a three and out to start the second quarter, uh, yeah. second half, excuse me. And what really pissed me off, too, was one of the three and outs. It was, you know, the Bucks defense got to stop. Mm -hmm. They're up 10-3. Jalen Darden has a good return. Gets it to the 45 yard line, right? And the Bucks go, uh, you know, they get a solid gain on first down, so it's second and two. And I don't even hate that they did a jet sweep, Scott, but what I really freaking hate <laughs> is that they ran the jet sweep with Julio Jones, who was playing on one yeah. GD leg. He's playing on one, he's right, he's got a peg leg, he's a freaking yeah. literal right. buck. He's a pirate, they're playing, he's on, a pirate, yeah, playing right. on one <laughs> leg. Yeah. I don't know. You got Scotty Miller. You got Chris yeah. Godwin, who you Rashad love Perriman. to throw screens yeah. to. Rashad yeah. Perryman is faster than Julio Jones. But no, you give yeah. it to the most hobbled guy on the <laughs> team. 
So he gets like barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Right. Oh, by the way, when the Ravens decide to go to a jet sweep, who do they yeah. give it to? Oh, yeah, Devin Duvernay, their fastest yeah. wide receiver on the I team. Know. And it's no shocker that he scored a touchdown. He had another run for 15 yards. Yeah. So, again, like Byron Leftwich, just silly, stupid play calling right there. And, again, time of possession. Even when the buck the ball on the field, he got the dash play from Mike Evans, who once again balled out for the box over 100 yards multiple receptions, but they could not sustain long drives. You mentioned the time of possessions, the difference yeah. in overall plays. How about this? Listen, we want the Bucs to pass the ball more, but we want them to be efficient when they run the ball. And remember, right. they had a lead at halftime. They had That's a lead right. starting in the third quarter. <laughs> they did. Uh, let's, look at the run. let's look at the rush yards, Scott. Yeah. Uh, the Ravens rushed it 33 times, and I get it. Lamar Jackson sure. you know, does a great job. Yep. They rushed it 33 times for 231 yards. Yes. 231 yards. Yeah. Ah. The Bucks. they ran it 15 times. Granted, they were down in the fourth quarter, had to pass it for 44 yards. Rashad right. White averaged the most yards per attempt um, in the Bucks' backfield. Leonard Fournette, as you said before, that contract signing looks worse and worse every single day. Does, Rashad yeah. White is the most explosive running back that yeah. the Bucs have, but it doesn't really matter because they can't right. get it done moving the ball down the field. The defense can't get stops when they need it. Oh, and by the way, the special teams got everything rolling with a yeah. muffed punt to begin the game. So, and that, that actually wasn't on Jalen Darden. That was on D Delaney. Yeah. For, for, uh, for trying to field the punt with his back. Right. I mean, he didn't have the awareness of, of where, of where he was on the field in relation to the punt returner. So that was not on Jalen Darden. Jalen Darden actually, Actually played pretty well. He averaged really sixteen point five yards on uh, three punt returns. Uh, boy, we're grasping at straws when we're saying Jalen Darden played well, right? I know. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll say this: there, there were one, two, three. There were five different Ravens players that ran the ball. Yeah. Okay. And Justice Hill had four carries for twenty-eight yards, but he had a twelve-yard run. Every single Raven that ran the ball. The the the, the uh, I always say this. Uh, every Raven had a, a a run of at least twelve yards or more. Okay, so Justice Hill had a twelve yard run. Devin Duvernay had an eighteen yard run. Uh, Lamar Jackson had a twenty five yard run. Kenyon Drake had a forty yard run. Gus Edwards had a twenty two yard run. Um, it's the it was same mistakes it, all like most it was. of the second half too. Yeah. Let's remember that Lamar had another 10, 15 yard run. that got <laughs> called back because of a holding where it looked like Zion McCollum kind of flopped on the play as yeah. well. Uh, I want to say thank you to Austin for this yes, $10 super chat, a uh, worst scoring offense through eight games since the 2013 bucks. I'm sure Scott would love to fill the new fans in on that train wreck. Don't think talent is the main <laughs> issue here. Uh, no, it, it's uh. I mean, it is because they're not playing well, right? And and even Tom Brady, I thought this was Brady's worst game of, of the season. It, he just, did not look good. So many inaccurate yes. passes. And sure, maybe some of it was the receiver didn't do the right thing. But yeah, he did not look good, man. And no. He looked like he was going to cry in his post-game press conference. I don't really blame him. Yeah. But I yeah, mean, he, he looked awful. You know, he, he was pressing, right? I mean, he got sacked a couple times. <clears throat> um, Kyle Rudolph technically was open. <laughs> Brady overthrew him. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I guess Brady, you know, thought he was, was Kate Otten maybe rather than, you know, um, double eight, right. Rather than yeah. eight, but <laughs> Kyle Rudolph just can't run, but he, he actually has step on his guy, but Brady threw the ball way out in front. Mike Evans was wide open in the end zone and, and they, they couldn't connect on a, on a, a play towards the back of the end. Brady was pressing, held on to the ball, took a couple sacks. Everybody's pressing. Everybody is, is just um, just, just pressing. And, and it, it was a promising start, right? I mean, uh, 10 points right off the bat, to a touchdown and, and a field goal, but then the same problems rear their heads. And, and what we did see, Matt, was we saw the Ravens and Greg Roman make tons of adjustments, right? They, they tried oh, to come yeah. out and throw the ball, attack the Buccaneers' weakness, which was a banged-up secondary. To, Dodd, to Todd Bowles' credit, he was blitzing Lamar Jackson, which was – the script that was what you should do against Lamar Jackson because of the fact that both the Giants and the Dolphins had success doing that. I mean, it worked. I mean, they had three points at halftime, right? Yeah. And, and then Greg Roman says, I'm going to make some adjustments. We're going to go back to being who we are instead of playing, instead of trying to attack the Buccaneers 
weakness is, we're going to play to our strengths. We're going to run the ball. It's what we do. And, and they steamrolled the Buccaneers defensively. And had the Buccaneers offense done anything with the ball in the third quarter, it probably wouldn't have been as bad uh, and, and as, as uh, ghastly. But, but the thing is, is when you look at uh, after the touchdown in the field goal to get the Buccaneers that, that early 10-0 lead, okay, they had punt, 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 field goal, field goal, touchdown, right? So in the second and the third quarter, they had five consecutive punts, and the, their drives lasted three plays, three plays, six plays, three plays, and four plays. And that's about the most uncomplimentary football as you could possibly imagine because it allowed the Ravens to simply just dominate the Buccaneers right. and steamroll them and wear them out. Exactly. And this this is another blowout game with with the, the exception of a garbage time touchdown that made yes. it to what eight points. And once again, this offense, I mean, it would have put me to sleep in that second half. But thankfully, I had a Celsius energy drink during Thank the God. computer game day show. I had the Arctic vibe, which you can see on the screen here. So many different flavors from the Arctic peach and tropical vibe. You'd also get uh, you know. Peach mango, strawberry kiwi, uh, strawberry lemonade as well. The cola flavor, uh, cucumber lime. Scott was drinking earlier today. Uh, an assortment of great flavors. Seven essential vitamins to get you uh, through whatever you got going on. A workout, a busy work day. It's the healthy version of an energy drink. Uh, if you only want to try one or two out, go to the Celsius store locator. Find out where you can get a Celsius near you, whether it's your local uh, gas station, convenience store, Walmart, Target, or Bodega. Bodega. Um, yeah. Go check out uh, Celsius or you can uh, have it shipped to your house or apartment. Just go on Amazon to subscribe and save and um, have it set up where, you know, every week, two weeks, three weeks, um, just have it sent to your house or apartment at your uh, at your own leisure. And I would recommend the variety pack. Variety's the spice of life. And you get to try out every different type of flavor that Celsius has. So that's Celsius hashtag Celsius live fit hashtag Celsius energy. Just make sure you're drinking a Celsius energy drink. Our presenting sponsor of this pewter uh, post-game show. And you talk about, you know, just the, the complimentary football. And players aren't helping out each other either. You know, Mike Evans, for every great big play that he made, you know, he dropped another deep ball down the field. And yeah. I'm not I'm not at the point where I'm going to be like, what's going on with Mike Evans? I fully yeah. believe that he can, you know, be a bounce-back guy. Yeah, I just, you know, it's frustrating to see that over the last two sure. days. Chris yeah. Godwin, same type of thing, man. He gets all these screens. He cuts it up the field. I want to see Chris Godwin make a play that's 10 yards down the field. All right? Where's that Chris Godwin? I understand. He's coming well, back from injury. He did, he did make the 44-yarder, the 44-yard catch and run. But but after that, it seems like he either wasn't getting open, yeah. wasn't being targeted, or the, the touches they were trying to manufacture for him were those screens and i just think that they went to the screen game far too long um you're trying to throw a screen to mike evans that's not his game uh, yeah he's, exactly he's I'm, a, I'm out scott i'm out on screens uh, yeah. other than if it goes to chris godwin i'm out on screens i'm done with it that's what screwed them up you know when they kicked the field goal to make it 10-3 early on right. the play was blown up from the beginning in the red zone because they threw a stupid screen pass to to Rashad White and it was a poor throw by Tom Brady got blown yep. up right away so they were completely you know, backed up from there, and they couldn't overcome, you know, a, yeah. a third and 12. I want to get to another super chat here because it's a uh, pretty big super chat. It's from um, Ted Curtis. Ted, thank you so much for this $20 super chat, if I can officially find it. Um, in the meantime, yeah, there we go. Ted, thank you so much for this $20 super chat. It says, forever grateful to the coaches <laughs> slash players who contributed to the past two years. Once in a lifetime experience for most fans. All the remaining wishes, we take drastic measures. Trade picks slash bench stars slash fire coaches go out swinging. Well, I like this approach. And Ted, yeah. we, 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 we're, th this is a perfect setup moment because here's what I think has to happen, and, and some of this will happen. Mm -hmm. um, 
Ty Bowles did make some news at, at the press conference. Uh, two big news items. Number one, Shaq Barrett uh, could yeah. possibly have a torn ACL. Looks like that's the case. Uh, Achilles. Achilles. Heel. I'm sorry. Yes. What did yeah. I say? ACL. I meant Achilles. Sorry. AC. And I just. Right. It, no, I'm with you. Late. It's 1245 at night. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so yes. Uh, the Achilles injury that's that's catastrophic. Uh, Shaq was actually having a great game. He was, aw- he was awesome yeah. today, tonight. He was he really awesome. Was. Yeah. Uh, I, I I firmly believe Byron Leftwich is going to be fired in either tomorrow or Saturday. Um, I, I think this is going to happen. It has to happen. The same issues that have plagued this team date back to training camp, Matt, to the preseason. It's scoring, it's red problems zone. on third down, red zone. Uh, third and short but lo and behold matt lo and behold oh my goodness what did they do on their first third down and in, in one conversion they spread them out with the three wide receiver set and they ran the ball against the light box imagine that we were losing it on yeah. the pewter game day show myself yeah. and josh capo we were absolutely losing it yeah. we were like look at that yeah, <laughs> it, it happens i'm taking no credit for it because I shouldn't have to take credit for it because Byron Lefwich, as an offensive coordinator, should know better. Um, Not myself or any reporter should have to sit there in a press conference seven weeks into the season, eight weeks into the season, and recommend, hey, maybe run into a lighter box on third and one rather than going heavy and jumbo with, with three tight ends and an offensive lineman because it hasn't worked for the past two months. I mean, again, sometimes football is not that hard. It really yeah. isn't that hard to figure out. There are some real common denominators from Pop Warner to high school to college to the NFL. The NFL is the most intricate. Don't get me wrong. It's the most advanced, okay? But at the same time, there are some basic threads that go all the way through. And um, and so, yes, they, they did a much better job, and I think they converted a couple of those. You know, they went to the well one too many times, on that two-point conversion, though, trying to run the ball with Rashad White. But uh, at, at least they're trying some things different. But at the same time, it, it has to work, right? you got to score more points. Uh, the process is one thing. And I think process-wise, I think they did some good things tonight. But but the results, uh, this is a results-oriented business, Matt. And I think the result of tonight is the Byron left, which will get fired. And... Um, there's a couple of candidates, and we spent some time talking about it during the week, Matt. Uh, actually, I think on Monday's uh, show, after I called for Todd uh, uh, Bowles to fire Byron Leftwich after last Sunday's game, we we talked about Clyde Christensen, the quarterbacks coach. Yeah. Um, we talked about Harold Goodwin, who's the run game coordinator. Yeah, that probably is not the right guy right now, given the struggles of the running game. And Kevin Garver, the wide receivers coach, the, the guy that is kind of the wild card sticking out to me, if Todd Bowles wants to go in a completely different direction for some outside the box thinking and some outside of the Bruce Arians scheme, because it seems like some of these routes, some of these these uh, uh, route concepts and pass structures are getting sniffed out pretty easily because this offense has been around for a while. That happens sometimes. Sometimes the league catches up to you. Like yeah. you can't run the Tampa two defense as a base defense anymore. There's way too many two beaters out there. And that's, that means a cover two beater. You can use Tampa two or cover two uh, as, as part of your defensive scheme as a changeup, but you can't run that anymore. Like you could back in the nineties, the game has just evolved. Right. And, and that's why yeah. Lovey Smith wasn't cutting it as a defensive coordinator in 2014 when he took or 2015 when he took over the play calling duties from Lizzie Frazier and he went Tampa two Tampa two Tampa two and it was slant pass slant pass slant pass first down first down first down and and all she wrote um I, I think Thad Lewis is is a name to to keep an eye on assistant wide receivers coach former NFL quarterback this guy is is a bright mind uh, talked to Bruce Arians about him uh, I'm not saying Thad Lewis is going to be the next offensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, but if they want to go in a, in a, in a more different direction than, than what they're, they're doing. And the, you know, I, I don't know how, how Todd Bowles thinks about Clyde Christensen as, as opposed to Byron Leftwich. Are, are they kind of in lockstep? Is, is there diff, differing opinions? I don't know. 
this guy seems like the wild card to me. And, and the, the names that I heard from Bruce Arians, when it looked like maybe Byron Leftwich was going to get the head coaching job somewhere, maybe Jacksonville, this offseason, Garver's name and Dad Lewis, those were the two in-house guys that were being bantied about. If Bruce didn't take over the play calling, it would be one of one of those two guys. So I, I and it wasn't Clyde. It wasn't Clyde right. who has play caller experience at this level from Bruce. Now Bruce isn't a head coach. Maybe Todd wants to do something different. But I think Byron Leftwich is going to get fired this weekend. He deserves to get fired. And if they if they do fire him, I. Thad Lewis would be my wild card guess. I mean, I'm all in favor of, of a shakeup because the Bucks clearly need to do something different. And if that means Thad Lewis, who play, you know, played in a different offense, has seen different offenses, I'm all for it. Um, yep. Because I mean, you even saw with the, you know, the team came out outside of the the fumble where it went off of D Delaney. This team came. We will get to uh, we will get to Devin White, but we do yep. have a couple of super chats. But this yep. team, you know, they. They came out hungry with an attitude, ready to go. Yes. Like Zion McCollum makes a play and he's yep. flexing, he's going nuts. The Bucs take the lead. Then they increase that lead to 10 3. And then as soon as the going got a little bit tough, yeah, they just rolled over once right. again. Got a little tough. They didn't stand yep. up for themselves and they just they just let it, you know, let it roll over again. Um, thank they, you, Craig. They, for they, 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 I was gonna say that chat. to your point, Matt, they really missed Antoine Winfield tonight. They yeah. really did. I, I think he makes a difference in if he's playing, they might end up winning this game. I, I yeah. just think he's that much of a difference maker. Uh, Probably would stop the run game a little bit, even at the safety yes. position. Yeah. You know? um, Craig here, thank you for the 499 super check. He drive the second quarter, first down at the 45. I think that's what I talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, you run tackle eligible, then run again. That was the, the jet sweep yep. to Julio Jones and short pass. Not one shot play. Why? Uh, what was Mike Edwards covering? I think that might be a separate question with, with I, I think Edwards. he was I think he's saying his, was Mike, Mike Evans covered or Mike right? Evans he's talking about yeah talking about the offense right so yeah yeah um it it's just again that's I, another example if they had their foot on the throat of their opponent in this case yeah. the Ravens could have again even a field goal there makes it a two possession game and maybe yeah. in the long run it still would have not made a difference for them but you at least build a little cushion you know, right. the Bucks haven't had like a multi-possession lead for, I don't know, like a, a month. It almost feels like. Yeah, you know? I mean, I mean, they had a seven-point lead at halftime, right? Ten to three, right? Yeah, so it's 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 uh, you know that that wasn't enough. Obviously, it wasn't going to get it very, uh, you know, it wasn't going to get the job done. Um, I, to to me, some other changes I would make, uh, it, and this is really tough. I'm writing about this in tomorrow's two-point conversion. This is really tough. Because Matt, you're three and five right now. You're Todd Bowles and Jason Light, and you're looking at this roster, and you're thinking, "Is this going to get better? Like, are we going to beat the Rams? Are we going to beat the Seahawks over in Germany? The Seahawks are playing pretty good football, right? Yeah. Uh, so th this thing could be three and seven really quick. You've got the trading deadline coming up next week. The scary thing is. A losing record in this division just might win it this year. And we've seen it before. We've seen a 7-9 and nine Seahawks team win the NFC South. Yeah. Several years ago, we saw the Panthers with a 7-win team win the South uh, a few years ago. So th those are a couple of examples of, of some teams that had losing records, but the division was so bad, they still won. And the NFL has this stupid rule, which is even if you have a losing record, and you win your division, you somehow win a playoff home game. A home game. That's at that's your stadium. The, yeah. For that, for sucking, really. And, yeah. and then and then you have like a 10 or 11 win team come in to play you in your place when it should be at their place. But that's just how it is. That's the rules and, and all of that. So with the NFC South being so vulnerable and so still in play, Matt. I, I think that there is a temptation by this this organization to to say, we're, we're, gosh, you know, we 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 could trade some players, kind of rebuild, stockpile some draft picks, and 
but but you know, boy, we we might be able to sneak in. And if we get Ryan Jensen yeah. back later in the year, and if we just get better, we still have Tom, and it's the postseason, and we know what Tom does in January. And I'm just I just don't see it this year. It just doesn't feel like it's this year, right? It feels like it's slipping away almost because it's meant to slip away. And I'm not trying yeah. to be doom and gloom, Matt, but doesn't it kind of feel that way? Doesn't it feel like like it's it's not going to get better this year? Again, yeah, they show flashes of what they've been in, in you know, 2020 and 2021. You saw that in the first quarter. You saw that by the defense who only, again, the only points they allowed in the first quarter was because, or in the first half was yeah. because of the muff punt. Pat O'Connor, friend of the program, blocks that yep. field goal at the end of halftime. That's a momentum thing when it you is. know you're getting yep. the football, too. And the Bucs will only be a game out of the NFC South uh, on right. Sunday. The Panthers play the Falcons, and the winner of that is in first place in the NFC South, which is absolutely crazy. I want to get to that uh, super chat in just a moment. Sure. But first, want to hear from our friends at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino because the Bucs aren't winning, but at least you could win some money there. Yeah. Just the way you like it. Me and my wife decided we'll have some fun. I was playing a two cent machine. Six bets in, I hit a jackpot. $117,000. Hi, my name is Tara because I want over $500,000 playing slot. I do this full time and I would not change it for the world. I'm Gloria. I won over $2 million at Seminole Hard Rock Casino. I went and bought a bunch of jewelry. <laughs> my name is Mike and I won over $350,000. I love playing back rock because it hits different. When you pull in that car and you flip over that nine, beating that eight, can't miss. I'm Jimmy. I won a half million dollars in a slot tournament at Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. Even a lion's squirrel can get a nut sometimes. <laughs> my name is Philip, and I won two hundred and fifteen thousand on Blazing Sevens. Put my last four dollars on the table. Next thing you know, bam, two hundred and fifteen thousand jackpot. I hit that bad boy. I didn't realize how much it would change my life. You only live once. Have fun with it, right? Anybody can win. It's them no hard rock in Tampa. Just the way never know when you can. Go. Yes, it is. You never know when you can win big at the Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. So. Yeah. Well, there's uh, we got a couple of super chats to get to. You would just put one up. Yep. Uh, shout out to ET. Yep. Phone home. Uh, thank you for the 999 super chat. Uh, do you think Brady's minor shoulder versus uh, Chiefs game is a problem? What would you guys do with this team right now? Load up the trade block, fire Leftwich, blow it all up during the offseason? Good questions here. Um, as far as what I would do with the team, I would get rid of Byron Leftwich. I would make Nick Leverett. I'm talking about guys on the roster right yep. now. I would make Nick Leverett the full-time starter at left guard. Yep. I would give Rashad White an even amount of playing time as Leonard Fournette. Make 50-50 because I think even in a couple games, mm -hmm. maybe he's close to earning that because he's been the most explosive running yep. back. Um, I would put... Julio Jones or Russell Gage, one of them on IR because neither of them were healthy. I don't care what Julio Jones did today with a garbage time touchdown. Right. And yeah, I would start fielding trade offers as well um, and see either someone you can get or someone that maybe you could trade off and acquire more draft picks. That's just what I would. Yeah. Do. The other change I would, I would make is, is I would get a look at uh, Ola Kunde of uh, Farukasi. At, at middle linebacker, and I would yeah. consider I would consider setting Devin White. Um, I, yeah, we have to talk about Devin White. He he's such an undisciplined player. It's terrible and, today. Yeah, I mean, he made five tackles last week against Carolina, and he missed at least five. If you go back and look at the film, I mean, his ratio is is, is awful. I, I actually had to do a screen grab and uh, and throw that up on Twitter. Um, the with Linderbaum, right? The the rookie center for the Ravens. Yeah, that wrestled Tristan Wirfs. Yes, uh, yeah. was wrestling Devin White 15 yards down the field. So much so that Devin White literally was so engaged in, in, in fighting, not fighting, but just, just like wrestling Linderbaum that he had Gus Edwards literally running right behind him with his back turned. Now, this is not the line of scrimmage. This is like 15 yards down the field, okay? And it's just too many times Devin White just cannot get off blocks. And yep. and it's 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 bad. And we even saw we even saw a an instance where uh Todd Bowles was screaming at Devin White as he yeah. walks off the field. 
Uh, shout out to SRQ Salt Video. Uh, thank you so much for the 999 chat. And right, you know, again, this is exactly yeah. what we're talking about right now. Let's address Devin White. We all can agree he's overrated and always a, a liability in the past game. But tonight, his run defense was atrocious. Yeah. You know what's the most pathetic play from Devin White today? It was actually a play that he made. He, you know, uh, Lamar Jackson was scrambling, moved up the field. Devin White chases down Lamar Jackson, about a five-yard gain. But mm-hmm. the Ravens got a first down, and Devin White pops up and is like, yeah, yeah, yeah I just made that play. Bro, he just – dude, yeah. he just got a first down. Like, you shouldn't yeah. be celebrating. You just allowed another first down. <laughs> right. He and missed it, tackles left and right. The one you're, play you're he right. makes, he's all about, yeah, look at that play I just made. He yeah. only got five yards instead of ten. Are yeah. you effing kidding me? Right. You're and, and showboating the- because you tackled a guy when he got a first down? Get the hell out of here. The funny thing is on that play, I think the cameras caught it when when he's like, you know, rah, rah, like I made the tackle. I got Lamar Jackson. I, I think Lamar's like, I got the first. Yeah. Down. Like he pointed, he's like, uh, Devin, I got the first down, dude. So, yeah. And, and I had to tweet it out because, listen, I, I am hearing from multiple sources, multiple, multiple sources that they are fed up with Devin White's play at one bucket in your place. And, and so here's the problem. So, so, uh, why, why don't you bench him? Okay. KJ Britt's on the IR. KJ Britt's on IR. He, and KJ Britt's not nearly as good as an athlete as Devin White. Um, the other guy is, is uh, Olukunle Fadokasi, right? And he's, he's an undrafted free agent rookie who yeah. flashed in the preseason against other scrubs. Undrafted, and, and, undrafted and, rookies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know that I necessarily trust him in there. But man, I'm giving him some looks, <clears throat> and maybe in practice, I- I'm sitting Devin White um, and-, and putting Fadokasi in there. Maybe not in the games, but maybe to drive a-, a-, a message home. Because the thing is, is is if you continue to reward bad behavior, and what I mean by that is, is you keep messing up and we keep playing you, right? And I I, th- I think that this is this is kind of the code I've learned to 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 speak and understand coach speak, okay. And, and and I, I'm I'm really kind of this is your one of Todd Bowles really addressing the media on a daily basis, right? Because before it was like we, we get Bowles for eight minutes on a yeah. on a Thursday, Matt, right? When he's you know up there talking defense, and that was it. So now I'm starting to understand Todd Bowles, and when he says we got to coach it better, we got to play it better. What he means is is I have guys that I'd love to bench and sit down, but I can't because the backups are or even worse. worse and or let's put it this way they're not better okay and and i'm stuck playing certain players and i need the coaches to get these certain players to friggin play better okay and stop hurting the team okay now the mm. other part of this too is is again there's been a couple of unfortunate instances that have i think negatively affected devin white he made a pro bowl that he didn't deserve to go to yeah okay the year, he, if you want to make an argument for Devin White being a Pro Bowl player, I would give you 2020. 2020 Devin White I agree. Was, was much closer to being a Pro Bowler than last year. Because last year, Devin White got exposed down the stretch when he didn't have Levante David erasing some of his mistakes, okay, during the down the stretch during those last couple games of the season. Then, this year, he's playing worse than he did last year. He did have a really, really good game, and I gave him all the props for it, and even the coaches – Remember, Larry Foote said he played a perfect game against Dallas, Mm -hmm. and he did. He had a hell of a game in week one against the Cowboys. And to Devin White's credit, Matt, you were there. You saw it. I saw it with Josh Capo out in in Tennessee. When When the Dolphins came to town, when the Titans came to town, he was covering backs and tight ends. He was. Like white on rice out of the backfield and 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 really was was improved in coverage. He's just become undisciplined. He's see football, get football, rather than doing his assignments. And he is a mouse that takes the bait. He, he looks for the cheese. Mm-hmm. And, and other teams know this. He's easily manipulated. And quarterbacks know this. Offensive coordinators know this. And he's, he's becoming a liability in, in certain instances on the football field. And so, you know, having said that, um, he gets named the September – Remember, there's only three weeks in September, three games. Yep. And 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 he he was named the September 
N- N- NFC or the defensive, defensive player, player yeah, of, of the, the month. Week. Yeah, of, month. It, it, of the month. And, and it's like, what? Like, he had one good game. The, the Saints game was pretty good, right? The game after that, with the, the Packers game, not very good, okay? I mean, Logan Ryan was the star of that game. <laughs> There's no know, doubt, the right? But, but again, Devin White gets these accolades, and he thinks that he's better than he is. And I'm telling you, there are some very, very, very high up people that are telling me that Devin White is playing some bad football right now. Okay. And you could see it. They show it on the replay like so many times. Devin White, yes. nowhere to be found, not attacking the hole, or, you know, the lineman gets to the second level and the running back's five yards down the field before, you know, Devin White is there. And sure, Levante David needs to pick it up too, but at least Levante David was making a play. You know, he had that pass break up on, on the yep. opening drive for the Ravens. Devin White, nothing. And you say, see the ball, get the ball. Well, no one on defense is doing that, Scott. They right. went another game without turning the yep. ball over. And again, yep. on the flip side of it, the offense, another time where they didn't turn it over, and they still can barely muster 20 points. It needed a garbage time, late touchdown, bailed out by yep. a Scotty Miller, a pass interference that Scotty Miller um, was able to draw, which really was just luck because Tom Brady underthrew the ball, and right. I don't think that was by design. That was right. the and also too, there was an underthrow uh, to Mike Evans. I mean, Mike Evans had yeah. had steps. That was a, a touchdown, and that, that was when it hit him underthrown. in the stomach. Yeah, yeah, that was when um, it hit him in the stomach. So there's really just been, you know, yeah. All right, so so he, he, here's the here's the big question, and I'm not stupid enough to actually uh, make this statement because uh, because it, it's outlandish to think. But when Todd Bull says everything's on the table, right from coaching changes to whatever. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go Let's go down that road and take Todd Bowles literally. Okay. Matt, uh, do you even consider, okay, and I'm, 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 I'm not putting you on the spot because I'm going to come out and say I'm considering. It. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I'm considering it. Would you consider trading Tom Brady for draft picks right now, knowing that it might not get any better and you might lose the NFC South? And you might win seven games this year, and Tom goes out with a whimper. Or do you try to get something for the goat right now? Now, having said that, I don't think that would be. Uh, I don't good. think like. Yeah, I just think I I, I understand this is a hypothetical, it's but a I hypothetical just completely. I don't. It would have to be like who's trading for him? What team is like a right. quarterback away from making yeah. a big play? It's so tough to trade for a quarterback in season yeah. because you can't just. You know, it's not like Christian McCaffrey. It's like, hey, right. like, here's a little bit of the offense. Just learn this. The quarterback right. has to know everything. Um, Bruce Arians said last year at the Combine, while Tom Brady was still yeah. retired, he's like, I would take five first-round draft picks. You would at right. least have to have one first-round draft pick. But as we talked about earlier, you know, they're only going to be a game out of first place. And exactly, well, yeah. you got to get into the dance. So right. unless it was for, I think, it, like at a minimum, two or three uh, three first round picks maybe something like that you would yeah. have to like consider trading him but this team is too talented to be this bad so as rough as it is right now i'm not ruling out that they can like turn it around be a competitive right. and formidable team when you have brady evans and godwin i don't think you could ever rule them out of yeah. of like any game so it would have to be similar to what bruce like about to be three or four, right. you know, first and, round draft. And, and here, here's why I'm even posing this. I'm posing this to help Tom. Yeah. Okay. And to help. The I Buccaneers. would kind of. I would do that too. Okay. If it helped Tom. It was like, all right, like Tom's gonna go. Like, I don't like, know, like, like Tom. Do you want it to end like this? Is this how you want to go out, dude? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, do you want to hit the reset button? And I know you're probably thinking, should I have retired? You know, come out of retirement. Um, forty <laughs> ers Dolphins. Do, you know. Do you, you want always want to go to the Dolphins anyway? Yeah. So. yeah. Do, do you do you want an escape hatch? We can we can find the escape pod and jettison you off, right? If if that's what you want, right? If you if you would feel better, right? I mean, I don't know. When 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 everything's on the table, you have to consider everything. Yeah. Right. You have to consider everything. Um, and so I I don't think that that they would do that. I, I don't know that Tom would, like you said, would want to go somewhere mid season, right. And have to try to learn an offense and new players. And I mean, it, it's, it's a lot. 
Uh, and and you just don't see it. You don't see quarterbacks getting <laughs> no. traded mid-season. No, don't. never. Uh, one thing that everyone definitely should consider, though, is age rejuvenation. As we age, our hormones decrease, both for men and women. I was tired all the time, had no sex drive. I was groggy. I felt like I was 80 years old because everything hurt. I came to age rejuvenation because I was tired all the time. Bioidentical hormones has really made such an impact in people's lives. I actually enjoy shopping now. Got my, all my energy back. Mind is sharp. I feel like I'm 18 again. It was perfect for me. Get with age rejuvenation. Do it now. Don't wait. Call age rejuvenation today. You know, Matt, I'm I'm 50. I turned 50 this year, but um, I'm actually 55 in Buccaneer years. These Buccaneers have actually <laughs> aged me. Uh, actually, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm 55. For, I, I'm, I've gained a year for every loss I've had to see this team incur. Now, the good thing is, is age rejuvenation says, ho, 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 not so fast, my friend. Uh, we're going to turn back time. We're going to turn, turn back, back time. Back time. Uh, if you could find a way, and they have a way, it's called uh, testosterone therapy. And uh, because I, I was losing energy. I, I felt sluggish. I felt tired all the time. You heard all those people, and I, I'm listening to them. Every everyone except for the lady who's like, you know, I didn't like shopping anymore. I don't believe you, lady. I think you like shopping. <laughs> I just didn't think you could last as long at the mall, and now you can because you've been age rejuvenation. And folks, if you want to feel better, if you want to get some energy back, if you want to feel younger, go to age rejuvenation. It's legitimate. It works. I started my journey back in august it takes a couple weeks for the testosterone therapy to kick in and now look at me i'm doing a podcast at at 1 11 a.m on east coast time and that never would have happened if not for age rejuvenation it's true uh lose weight feel great uh, age rejuvenation you've seen them on the srs fab five column they're also the presenting sponsor of our pewter report tailgate show um Five locations in the Tampa Bay area to serve you, agerejuvenation.com. Make sure you go there and sign up for the free consultation, right? Go there if you're having problems in the bedroom, if you're having problems with energy, if you're having a mental uh, acuity issues, a foggy brain, that kind of stuff, go to Age Rejuvenation. I wish I would have done this years ago because this didn't just happen when I turned 50. This happened in my mid-40s, but I'm so glad I did because I feel like I'm 40 again. I really feel like about 10 years of my life has just been restored and and I'm grateful for that. So make sure that you visit Age Rejuvenation if you want to lose weight and feel great and maybe even have some better sex. We're going to get to a couple more super chats and then call the episode because it's past one in the morning and the Bucks played a horrible game. Too. It's not like, you know, they made a crazy comeback or, you know, a great game or anything. So Daniel, we thank you again for the super chat 499, uh, which needs to go. But the Bucs squad was poorly constructed from the start by Jason Light. Too many injury prone free agents. The team looks old and slow. They definitely look slow. Yeah, they do. And I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You know, it's a win now team that they took a risk with a lot of these, you know, veteran guys. And, you know, you take the risk, you're not always going to hit it. And right. they didn't, you know, whether it's Hicks, whether it's Julio, Julio just looks like a shell of himself at this point. Yeah. Couldn't even make the tough catches. Yep. Uh, the, the touchdown and, meant nothing to me. You know, it was exactly. a plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and you're right. And listen, um, again, for all of the accolades and props we give Jason Light for constructing a Super Bowl team, and he did, you can't take that away. In, in, in 2019 and 2020, Matt, it seemed like he could not. It seemed like he went to Seminole Hard Rock uh, Hotel and Casino, <laughs> and was just like making bets and just winning, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Like every move he made was was a winner, right? And sometimes yeah. that happens. It's just like like turnovers and sacks. They come in bunches, right? You 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 know you sign Tom Brady, trade for Gronk, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Antonio you know, Brown like, comes. Antonio through, Brown, man. yeah, get mm -hmm. him on board too. Uh, all those things, right? Leonard Fournette, you know, yeah, and, and 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 it all worked, right? And then this year, they they kind of tried some of the same things as you mentioned, Matt astutely. Uh, the Super Bowl window was was open, so they went with experience. They went with with some older guys, and and it came back to bite them, right? It just it blew up in their face, and and a lot of the moves they made didn't pan out. Now, I would I would love to see this defense with a healthy Logan Ryan. You give me healthy Logan yeah. Ryan, 
for 17 games. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to say that they're not three and five. They, they might be four and four right now, or maybe even five and three. I think that dude was a difference maker. I think he that really was. dude was a difference maker in terms of, of communication, in terms of tackling, in terms of punching the ball out, making plays. That guy was a difference maker. His loss hurts. And, and I think that's kind of a, a fluke injury. Maybe it's, it's an age-related thing. I don't know. But that's a fair point. It's a fair point about Jason Light getting some criticism. You, you got you to gotta take the praise when, when it works, and you got to take the criticism when it doesn't. Yeah, and I think that's why you see, uh, you know, a couple of positions where the depth isn't great. Inside linebacker, we talked about. Um, we right. obviously saw the Ravens take advantage of Zion McCollum, who played <clears throat> well early on, but then just could not make an open tackle yeah. at all whatsoever. Um, luck, I mean, obviously it sucks that Shaq Barrett is probably going yeah. to be out for the rest of the season. Yeah. At least I feel pretty good about the depth that the Bucks have at outside linebacker, but still, yeah. still sucks there. Um, we'll get to two more Super Chats and then... Yeah. Called an evening. Leo, uh, thanks for the super chat. Arians would have benched Devin White if he was head coach. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know about that, but I think he would have called him out in the media a little bit more uh yeah. than we've than we've you know seen before. So and then obviously we saw Bowles yelling at, at White today. So maybe yeah. that'll start changing a little bit. Uh Richard, thanks for the super chat. John Ledyard is to blame. He left and we're losing. Could be something to that. He came here, the Bucks won the Super Bowl, the Lightning won back to back Stanley Cup. Yeah. So uh could be something there. And uh, there's one more super chat we will get to. Shmoney. Um, Shmoney says, and thank you for the super chat. Uh, you can't knock Fadu Kasti. Give him a shot. He had a fantastic preseason. Yep. You lose nothing. Well, you could lose more games. And yeah. <laughs> um, we haven't seen him go up against, you know, the ones and twos uh, on the depth chart of other opponents. Um, but, you know, we played at Rutgers. He's a Shiano man. Um, I, you know, I'm open to. Yeah. I'm open to really trying anything at this point because Devin White as as missed terribly. Hey, JJ Russell showed no. I'm not trying to rhyme here, but right. JJ Russell showed good hustle on special teams. So yeah, he did. Hey, yeah. I don't know. Guys are chomping at the bit, willing and ready to go. Um, and Tony brings up a good point too. The injuries are are just ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, it uh, it was not good. Um, hopefully, it gets better next week. Uh, we, yeah, you know, which um, next week uh, yeah. we will have the Peter tailgate show the celsius peter report tailgate show a live from the walk-ons in midtown a little bit closer yeah. to raymond james stadium and of course presented by age rejuvenation uh next sunday they are playing the rams it's a home game but because the rams are a west coast team the bucks play a later game so the tailgate show will start at 2 30 uh, live at walk-ons in midtown and the uh in-game show with uh, reactions analysis with myself and, and a guest will start at 4 25 for kickoff so uh, make sure you check that out. We'll obviously be, obviously be promoting it uh, all of next week, too. But just keep that on your calendar for not this Sunday, the following Sunday. And we're not done with the Peter Report podcast just yet. We will have another right. one tomorrow mm -hmm. at uh, 4 o'clock after hearing the press conference from Todd Bowles. Maybe there's some big changes that happen in between uh, now and then. It'll be myself, most likely J.C. Allen, but I'll have a guest. Uh, regardless, uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m., a Friday edition of the show. So for Scott Reynolds, I'm Matt Matera saying thank you, everybody, for watching. We will see you tomorrow for another edition of the Pewter Report podcast. Out. Out.